I'm Rachel Goldsworthy and welcome to the drive home to Hawkesbury where I believe every home has a story and I love sharing those stories on real estate in the Hawkesbury with you. Here we share the best ways to add value to your property, how to avoid the common mistakes people make when buying and selling property and how to get the maximum return on your investment with a focus on supporting local business. I live, love Hawkesbury and can't wait to get into today's episode with you. So let's get started. Good morning, good afternoon or good evening, depending on what time you're watching the drive home to Hawkesbury. I'm Rachel Goldsworthy and today I'm lucky enough to be joined by Mark Lindrum. I'll just punch him into the show. How are you, Mark? Uh, Good, Rachel. How are you? Yeah, good. Really good. And um, Mark, tell me a little bit about where you started with uh, karate and GKR and uh, a little bit of a history on that for me. No worries. Um, so I started with GK Karate when I was 19 years old um, and I had no no martial arts experience prior to that, but I used to play rugby league and um, you know, a lot of competitive sports and that kind of stuff. And I had an opportunity to come in and, and become a member of GKR and start training in, you know, in karate. And yes, it's been really, you know, it's been great for my confidence. I was a really shy person when I first started. You really hated public speaking and that kind of thing. And you know, my, my confidence has just skyrocketed um, since the since I started with GKR. And I'm always fantasized and, uh, you know, um, had dreams of learning martial arts. I used to read the old Blitz magazines and um, things like that and try to learn the different moves out of there, but just for whatever reason, never got involved as a kid. But, um, yeah. yeah, I've been training since I was 19, so I'm 28 now, so nearly, nearly 10 years of training. I've seen some great videos online and you're all very active in the karate community and you're obviously very talented. Um, My little nephew plays um, or or does karate, little brown belt that he is, and uh, he loves it as well. It's a great discipline for the kids to learn and also adults to learn as well. And I think it serves you well in the community if you feel, you know, you're walking down a dark alley and you feel, you know, you make sure you feel safe doing that, I suppose, without um, endangering yourself. Oh, definitely. Yeah. yeah. Well, a lot of it, I mean, 70, pretty, you know, 65 or 70% of our students are children. Um, but, you know, I don't think adults maybe realise how beneficial it is to, to do some, you know, fitness training and, and martial arts training, even when you're in your 30s and 40s. So, yeah. uh, or even older, you know. So, we have people yeah. training in their 70s. I had a, a guy I had lunch with today. He's an instructor with us. And he started training when okay. he was 62. Yes. Um, and he's like 64 now. So, yeah. Wow. Yeah. And how long does it take somebody when they start karate to go from the first belt right through to the black belt or whatever the belt is that you need to get yeah, to yeah. become the master or sensei yeah, great like question. yourself? Yeah, great question. Um, look, it depends on the individual. You know, some people are, um, you know, just natural at it. And they pick it up and they run with it. Some people take a long time and it depends how often you train and that kind of stuff. And it, you know, if you're serious, you take it serious, you get serious results. Um, you know, if you if you're kind of casual about it, it's a really you know, G- GKR in Region Two is a very community, family kind of orientated club that you know people just come down just like being around us and you know just tr- doing a bit of training, not really taking the you know the gradings and that too seriously or getting the black belt. Uh, but then you get the people that are real serious about it, and, and um, you know we cater for that too. So a little bit competitive. It doesn't matter how how old you are; it's oh, yeah. still a bit of a competitive streak in us all. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. And tell me, you've started a program which is in schools and you, GKR, seem to help the young kids in those school programs with the karate and there's a couple of focus points that you do and what they get out of doing those programs in the schools. Can you tell me a little bit about that? Yeah, well, um, this kind of started, I guess, uh, early last year was to, was going into um, public schools and uh, running um, we've got two types of programs. We've got a Strange Danger Safety Awareness program, which goes through the 10 traps to avoid, um, you know, when, when being approached by someone and then how to yes. get around those things. Then we also go through, in those programs, we go through three um, self-defense or escape tactics, I guess. It's something like with the little kids, if someone, you know, grabs them and that kind of thing and, and how to get out of those kind of situations. Mm-hmm. And the other one is, is more of like a karate fit program, which is an ongoing, um, usually go for the term and it goes over 10 weeks. Some of them are just five-week programs. Okay. And um, yeah, with those, we just go through, we, we sort of start small, build up the foundation with their basics, which is their yeah. punches, blocks, kicks and stances, that kind of thing. And then we move you know, more advanced things as the term goes on. But the main, the main part of that is to teach them self-defense and give them a bit, of a, you know, a bit of a head start, I guess, if they want to further their karate career after yeah. that. 
And I've seen some terrific videos on GKR's Facebook site that the kids just love it. They love turning up. Mm. They love doing – it doesn't feel like a chore to them. It doesn't feel like it's a – oh, gosh, I've got to go to karate. It's They can't wait to get to karate and they can't wait to get the results as a result of attending the classes with all the teachers and, um, you know, sunsets. Did you manage to check out the um, the Region 2 Facebook page? Yes, I did, and it's so cool. Did you cool. watch the, the, um, the Try Not To Laugh Challenge we did? I was going the... to say that the laughable challenge or the, you know, and the, the win. <laughs> It had yeah, everyone yeah, yeah. in stitches. I think even the the, the photographer and film uh, videographer behind the scenes, she was um, struggling to keep a straight face as well. <laughs> yeah, Natasha, she does. She does a lot of our um, Natasha Fernandez. She's she's one of our students as well, and she um, yeah, she's uh, yeah. I think she uh, she enjoyed it a lot big too. Big shout <laughs> out to Natasha. She had a lot of fun, and a big shout out to everybody from GK and those people yeah. that are watching online. And if anybody's got any questions and they want to interact as we're going through the broadcast, feel free to put them up on the screen. We're happy to get Mark to answer those questions and uh, anything that you might have in regards to karate. So in regards to the school programs, um, is there some way that people can help out with those? Because I know it's only a small donation that might help a child um, be able to do these courses. Can you tell me a little bit about that? Yeah, well, um, I mean, the last few we've been running, we've we've got um, sponsorship from external companies um, to run the program. So it actually costs okay. the children at those schools nothing, um, right. and it costs the school nothing as well. So um, that's a bonus. And yeah, yeah I mean, it's, it's probably as little as you know, two or three dollars per child to do a five week course. You know, wow. so it's it's really. Uh, you know, not that much, and, and you can help, I guess, you know, get the kids through that stuff. And, you know, we, we really, I guess, rely on those companies, you know, funding those and supporting those things so that we can run them and sure. run them yeah. to their full ability as well. So, yeah. And you're doing one in, in the Hawkesbury at the moment, aren't you? You're just about to start a program. Yeah, well, we're just about to kick off two. We got, we got one at um, Hobartville Public School, which is, um, which is great. I think they've got maybe 400 attendants, 400 students there. So we're going to be running that um, a whole day, actually. So we're going to spend all of Thursday there. Um, this is in term four. So we're going to spend all of, all of Thursday there just teaching every one of them wow. um, karate basics and stuff. So it's going to be a massive day and a lot of fun. Um, and the other one is uh, Windsor South Public School. So we ran one there term four last year, and it was massive. It was really, really good. And we ran that. Yeah. I think that was a six-week course there. Okay. And, yeah, it was just it was awesome. Yeah, I think the kids just love it and they love being there with their mates and just learning and, and just sort of playing a bit of, you know, team sport together and working out how to do one-on-one, -on -one, um, mm. you know, challenges. And what do you find with karate is the most challenging for people that want to start? Mm. Yeah, good question. Um, I guess maybe seeing themselves as, as being someone who can do it. Um, mm -hmm. And you know, seeing themselves wearing the white outfit and the belt and mm -hmm. the badge and, and that kind of stuff, um, yeah. you know, maybe maybe they feel like it's a bit beyond them to do, and and maybe they don't have the the self belief to stand up there in front of the group and do the training, I guess. But once you start doing it, you start seeing some some success, and you, you start feeling like, yo, I'm getting the hang of this, and you start seeing That's the fitness, it. you know, yeah. and the um, yeah, I mean, it's overall health, you know, benefits of doing it. Then you you stick around longer, and you know, you form a relationship with the instructor, and um, yeah. You know, and yeah, they kind of coach you and guide you and, and try to get you to each of those belts and levels. And hopefully one day you could even get a black belt. Yeah, absolutely. It seems to me um, with what you do and what the team at GKR do is a real sense of belonging, a real sense of community. Would that be right? Oh, definitely. Um, yeah, GKR Karate, massive, you know, family, family and set of club. There's mums and dads that train together, um, you know, with their kids and grandparents as well. Um, there was one, there was a tournament a couple of years ago and um, basically there's a there's a thing called it which is it's called a team carter okay and a card is i guess basically like a pattern of moves where it's kind of like a dance routine but basically in this um team carter there was three generations so there's was, there was three people in the team carter so you had a granddaughter um the mum and the grandmother doing a, a carter together and they won a bronze medal um How at a tournament so yeah That's it's just really awesome. i haven't yeah. i haven't seen that personally but massive yeah. achievement it was really really good Nice to have the generations through the family and obviously they're getting a lot out of it. And not only that, you all get to train and, and have fun together and, um, you know, get on the, the field together. So that's a oh, good definitely. thing to do. What do you call it, the mat? Is it the mat in karate? Yeah, yeah, or the, or the um, yeah, well, sometimes we go train on the mats, the you yeah. know, karate mats and that, I guess if you're doing um, like a tournament sparring, that kind of thing, you want to use those. But, you know, we, most of the time we just train on hardwood floors. 
Yeah. And um, I think you're a bit of an Iron Man behind the scenes or and even on the scenes uh, with your Facebook page and what you do. But what sort of training does somebody like you have to do to keep as fit as you are and win what you do? Mm. Yeah, look, you know, that's a, that's a good question too. And I had a couple of people ask me that question actually not long ago, like, you know, in the last few days, you know, what do you do to keep your strength up, that kind of thing? I think it's just a, it should be a rule for yourself, you know. I mean, when I go to the gym, I don't like going, you know, sometimes I don't like going to the gym, I don't like waking up and going and working out, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I don't like training, you know, but just once you've made a decision to do that, you know, now the new excitement is the discipline of, you know, <laughs> of, of doing it every day. So it's probably, yeah. a, it's a really rare day if I don't, I don't exercise. Exercise, okay, um, yeah. And I think, too, it's all about aligning our behaviours with where we want to be because if we set a goal that we want to be fit or we want to be the best on say or we want to be the best trainer in karate, you can't do that by sleeping in. You can't do that by eating mm. hamburgers and chips for lunch and by not doing the exercise that you need to do. Yeah. You've got to be disciplined, I would imagine, and and just um, sure. set those, that ideal week and, and just go for it. Mm. No, definitely, yeah. What you mentioned with the Iron Man thing, that was actually um, someone took a, the photo on the right, which is me. If you go on my display picture, it's got a picture of me with, with Iron Man. That's what um, Rachel's talking about now. Um, someone actually made that up from – we had a world tournament last year at the end of the year, and I did a Carter, just a performance, and someone stole that photo and, and put it next to the Iron Man, kind of doing the similar thing and mashed it up. And uh, sent it to me, and I was like, "Oh!" <laughs> and they said, "Like Mark, Mark, Mark Lindrum, Iron Man, or something." And I was like, "Oh, cool!" So I just I stole that. And, uh, yeah, I'm not. No, I think you know. I don't think anyone calls me Iron Man or anything like that. But just a bit, you know, a bit of fun. Well, I've seen some of your videos, and you look pretty Iron Man to me. And you're you're oh, out cool. there doing um, lots of different things for the crew there. What, mm. what is uh, who is Mark and and family? Those sorts of things are they all involved in karate as well? Yeah, look, my daughter um, tends, you know, she she's six and um, she tends to tag along the classes and that kind of thing. Um, she doesn't, I guess, she doesn't train so much and, and get involved in the process of doing the, the grades and that kind of thing. You know, her and I occasionally spar and, you know, kick, you know, and just kind of muck around with that kind of stuff. Um, you know, I think sometimes, you know, you, when you try to be tough and play that role, that sensei role mm -hmm. in the class, Mm. You know, I've had my daughter come and train me before and she she gets freaked out because, you know, sometimes I'm a bit of a different person um, yes. teaching. So she's like, why is, why is dad angry at me, you know? Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. And yet so, you're I just mean, putting on that Iron Man mask that you have to oh, do yeah. and part of what, what you are on the yeah. field or on the uh, the mat, as you say. I think I think she knows how, you know, how laid back and how fun I am at home. Yes. And, um, you know, sometimes, you know, especially when you've got big, you know, large classes, kids, adults, everyone that, you can't, you, can, you, can, you know, we have fun and we, we're casual about it too, but you got to have that serious look sometimes. Otherwise, kids can, you know, you give them an inch and they take a mile kind of thing and they think everything's sure. okay. But, yeah. Um, yeah. No, for sure. And um, for those of the, that are watching that don't know, what is a sensei and how do you become one? Yeah, look, a sensei is a uh, coach or a, or a teacher. Um, and, you know, to become one with GKR, you need to be super keen, um, super passionate. You don't have to have the best, you know, karate technique, but you just, you got to have a real passion for, um, you know, helping people and a passion for your karate and training really frequently and have big goals and that kind of thing. And I guess have really, you know, good communication skills and be able to communicate that with other people to help them get to where you're at. Sure. Um, each each of those people that we select um, go through a six week intensive training program, and then at the end of that. Um, hopefully they come out with a with their sensei degree and and they start helping out in classes for a bit and then yeah. you know one day build up to teaching their own classes. Okay, no, that's terrific. And mm. how long would it take somebody to get to that point? Mm. Again, it, I guess it depends on the individual and their background. Um, going from scratch, you know, with with good a good personality and and you know, um, probably you know, a year and a half, two years of, of intent of good training to start to help out in classes and teaching and that kind of thing. Yeah. Um, in Region 2, um, well, GK has split up into regions. My region is um, Region 2, and we've got around 80, 86 instructors who teach um, wow. nearly um, si or 60 classes throughout the region. So, and all those all those guys are volunteers, and they, they volunteer their time each week to, to teach those classes mm. and um, mm. help the students get to the next level, and, and then I help them get to their next level. No, that's terrific. And mm. the regions that you're covering, you're talking about region two, where do you go from and to, and, and is this 
Region 1 and how far does yeah, your yeah, yeah. party cover? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, good question. Um, so Region 2 is is probably the largest region uh, yeah. in GKR, probably geographically. We we go from Katoomba yeah. all the way through to like Parramatta and Cherrybrook and Castle Hill and that kind of thing. So wow. it's a big yeah, it's a big area. We've got 34 suburbs that we're in and um, yeah, 60 classes in those in those 34 suburbs. So mm -hmm. it's a big thing and, and um, you know, we've got a big responsibility, I guess, with that big area to, you know, bring high quality self-defense classes and karate classes, you know, martial arts classes to those people. Yeah, for sure. And so if somebody wanted to get involved with GKAR, they wanted to start becoming either a sensei or or even start with the basics and just get the, the first belt down pat, how would they mm. get in contact with you? Who do they need to speak to? Yeah, the probably best bet would be call me directly. Um, I'm not sure if we can share my number maybe in the in the. I can share your number. You tell me what your number is and I'll type it in. Uh, zero four. Yes. Five zero. Five zero. Eight six. Eight six. One zero one eight. One zero one eight. Yeah. So, and my name is Mark, and I'm the uh, regional manager and senior karate instructor for Sydney Region Two. Um, the other thing they could do was jump would be to jump on the GKKarate dot com uh, website. Okay. Um, and just send an inquiry through. They've, they've got like a location. Um, tracker or location finder and you just find your closest location you can send an inquiry in and put details down and somebody can contact with you and get your yeah, sure. you know your local classes yeah no that's great and with mother's day coming up we we always love to reward those special mums that do so much for us um mm. in the karate world how can we help the mums that want to get fit or just continue their karate journey yeah definitely i mean you and i just i guess kind of spoke about this before the uh before we went live and um, you know, any any mum that would you know like to get involved uh, between now and maybe Mother's Day, we'd be happy to organise you know free membership and some some free gear and stuff to get them get them training, just to say thank you for being an awesome mum. Um, and yeah, get them training, and you know if they have an interest in it, they can take it further. And like you said, they could become a sensei or um, a senpai and things later. What's a senpai in comparison to a sensei? A senpai is a uh, assistant instructor. Yes. Well, actually, um, one of my um, really good instructors, um, Davey Wajaya, he told me that um, sensei means um, big brother and senpai means little brother and shihan, which is um, actually the definition of shihan, which is like top instructor, is um, classified as an expert right. um, in, in karate. So shihan is actually father. So you're like shihan, um, sensei and the senpai. So it's like a family um, and to you know, then teach you know, teaching the classes as a family as well. I was just going to say that it sort of basically resembles a hierarchy of a family and big little brother and looking out for one another and somebody who's the expert mum and dad sort of um, looking over the clan and making sure that everybody's um, holding steady and on the right mm. path in life. So, yeah, well, yeah. it's been great to speak to you today. Um, I'll put the links up as well for people to find GKA Karate, but I really appreciate your time. And if anybody wants, no worries, thanks for yeah. Um, you know, GKR Karate and putting some money towards um, some of the programs within the schools if you're a business and you would like to support locally to the Hawkesbury or to any of the Region 1 or 2 for GKR, I'm sure Mark would love to hear from you. I really appreciate everybody being online today. Um, there's quite a few people that have been online and uh, we like to say hello to everybody. And if you've got any other questions that you can't get through to Mark um, and you want to speak to me and then I can shoot them across to Mark, I'd be happy to do so. So thanks again, Mark. Really appreciate your time and uh, look forward forward to catching up with you on the next episode. No worries. Thank you so much. Okay. You're welcome. Talk See you later. Bye. Bye, bye. Bye. Thank you so much for taking time out listening to today's episode. If you have any questions on the process of buying, selling, leasing or strata management, please don't hesitate to reach out to me. Be sure to subscribe on iTunes and I'd really appreciate it if you could spread the word by liking and sharing this episode with your family and friends. I'm Rachel Goldsworthy and I look forward to catching up with you on the next episode of the Drive Home to Hawkesbury.